What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your 12th tutorial in Java game development. And in this tutorial we're going to be building our main movie loop. Now what the main movie loop is, the main movie loop, it's the method that actually plays the movie. It goes from frame to frame. So let's go ahead and, well, let's just go ahead and start. And we named it movie loop in the last tutorial, so let's go public void movie loop. Now it's not going to take any parameters, it's just going to be a powerhouse, do something. So we need a couple variables in here. What we're going to keep track of, of the time it begins. So let's go long starting time, there we go, and set this equal to the time it is right now. So system current, right there, time millis. And what this does is it goes on your computer, on your clock, and gets whatever time it is when this animation starts or the time right now so now we have a starting time easy enough and what we're also going to do is keep track of a cumulative time that the animation has been running for so at first long come time at the time we make this variable it's equal to starting time since the starting time right now is pretty much zero so the cumulative time it has been running for is zero because we didn't do anything yet. We just typed one line of code and we didn't make any loops. So now what we're going to do is make a while loop to test it against and make sure that it only runs for five seconds. So let's go ahead and put while and put while cumulative time minus starting time is less than 5,000 milliseconds, of course. What do we want to do? And you need to put that minus. And what this is going to do is the first loop, this is going to be 0 minus 0. While this is less than 5,000, then run this code. And this is going to play your movie. And if you're saying, all right, then how does this get above 5,000? Well, in this code, we're going to keep adding to cumulative time. So whenever cumulative time gets above 5,000, like 6,000, 6,000 minus 0 is 6,000 this would be false so it wouldn't run anymore so that's when that's how we're pretty much going to do this but now we need one more variable and that's the time that passes from each loop so long time passed and what do we want to do we want to set this equal to system current time millis and what this is going to do is keep track of the time it passes in one loop and we're going to keep track of this by time passes equal the current time minus, well, I shouldn't have said that, cur time, just like that. That makes a little more sense. And let's see, oh, it's cumulative time right there. So now it gets the current time and minuses it from the cumulative time. So, for example, if on the first example it took 12 milliseconds, to do this loop then it would be remember cumulative time zero right now then the time that passed from when it hit this code the first time would be 12 here here's what i'm saying pretty much since these are both zero to start out with after you get done running this code for the first time and you finally get to this line if 12 milliseconds have passed um it would be 12 milliseconds minus zero so in the first loop, time pass would be equal to 12 milliseconds. So why do we need that time pass variable? Well, first of all, since we're keeping track of the cumulative time that passed, let's go go cumulative time plus equal time passed. So cumulative time is pretty much just going to keep adding up and adding up all the time that passes during this loop. And eventually, once five seconds has passed, it's going to break out of the loop. So how cool is that? And also, what we need to do is go to A, our animation class, update, and put time passed right in there. And remember, in our animation class, we made this update method, and it pretty much keeps track of how long the movie should be playing. And once it surpasses um, the length, or excuse me, the total time that it should be playing, then it quits. So, you know, or excuse me, it restarts the animation, that's what it does. So let me go give you guys an example one more time. 
All right, whenever you start, because I know this is probably the most confusing part of this entire animation, but once you get this, um, you'll be good. So time begins, say it starts at zero, where it's just beginning our animation. Cumulative time, we're set this equal to zero as well. Now this is the loop that runs over and over again. These only run once. Cumulative time is only set to zero one time. Then it changes. So while zero is less than zero, minus zero, excuse me, so this is zero is less than 5,000, which is true. Then what do we want to do? Well, this time passed is probably equal to somewhere around 12 or something by now. So the current time minus zero would be like 12 milliseconds or something like that. And now cumulative time equals 12 because 12 equals 12. And if you ran it again and time passed equals 12 milliseconds on the next time, then it would be equal to 24, then 36, then 48, and it would keep accumulating time until it finally got more than 5,000. In every loop, it counts the time that passed from the last loop, and it sends it an update. So this time pass is probably going to be like 12 each time, but, um, you know, whenever you call this method, then it needs this information. So that's why we needed to get the that, that variable. So now let's start drawing stuff on the screen. So graphics G equals screen dot get full screen window and get graphics. And we did this in our last tutorial. So you should know we're just making a graphics object. And all this stuff is review, but I mean, it's necessary. Next, we're gonna make a draw method, and we're gonna pass it the G, of course. And when you're done, don't forget to dispose of your graphics object, it's just good housekeeping. Now, what we wanna do after we're done drawing, we always wanna sleep for a little bit. And this gives everything, this gives everything time to catch up. So, thread.sleep for 20 milliseconds. And this means do nothing at all for 20 milliseconds in case something's running in the background. We'll give you time to check up. So, or excuse me, catch up. Catch up. Next, let's catch exception ex. Don't handle it at all. And got to capitalize that stuff right there. So now it looks to me like aside from our draw method, we are done with this movie loop right here. So that movie loop, like I said, was the most confusing thing easily in this entire series so far. But once you get this movie loop and you know how the time works, then you could pass that time into update. And that's pretty much why we did it. We need to get all that so we could pass this information in our update. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna be finishing this whole animation set and we're gonna be done with animation. So, you know, these two tutorials and these two classes were a pain to walk through, but I mean, they're necessary. So in our next tutorial, we're going to be finishing that draw method from right here. And also, we're going to be running it and see what the final product looks like. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Can't wait to the next tutorial, and I'll see you then.